Today I got a brand new Dell G5 gaming laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Dell G5 gaming laptop. Uh, I'm going to do some upgrading. It's not a bad little entry level gaming laptop, but it doesn't have a lot of RAM. It do doesn't have a lot of storage, so I'm going to beef that up. Ultimately, when I'm all done, I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10, the latest version, because it's not quite up to date. Um, quick overview of the laptop. Like I said, it's a G5 15. It's a 5500 gaming laptop. It has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti graphics with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It has 10th generation Core i5 processor, the 10300H CPU. 8 gigabytes of DDR4, 2933 megahertz RAM, has a 256 gigabyte NVMe, S NVMe SSD, which I'm going to inc increase that as well as the memory. Um, it's got a 130 watt power brick here. Got it plugged in right now, it's all charged up. It's got the Intel Wi Fi 6, of course, a backlit keyboard, accentuated WASD gaming keys here. It's not an RGB keyboard, it's just the, the subtle blue as you can see. Um, the, um, the display isn't too bad, it's 15.6 inch, it's 20 hertz, uh, full HD IPS display, so it doesn't look bad. Um, as far as ports, not, nothing too special, you got your SD card slot, headphone jack, a couple of high speed USB ports, the A type over there, get rid of the power cord. And then over here, we have a C-type USB, an Ethernet port, another USB, HDMI, and of course your power cord. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to shut it down, I'm going to get into it, and we're going to put some new parts in it. So let me go ahead and shut it down. <clears throat> and what I'm going to put in, guys, is like I said, it has a factory 256 gigabyte SSD. I'm going to replace that. Customer decided they want a Western Digital Black. I give everybody oops, lots of options. Uh, they, in this case, they want to go with the Western Digital Black. It's the NVMe SN750 model. These are pretty fast drives. They got pretty good numbers. They're right up to our, with the Samsung 970s. So we're going to put in a good drive in it, and I'm going to put in a 32 gigabyte kit of HyperX from Kingston memory, 216s, 2933 megahertz. So let's go ahead and close the lid. It's all shut down. It's got a nice, I don't know, kind of a metallic finish to it. Nice and smooth. It looks like it's easy to clean. It does like to show your fingerprints though, but um, not too bad of a finish on it. All right, so what we're gonna do is start removing some screws here. And for this, I'm gonna use, actually I'm gonna use my number one Phillips screwdriver here. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go back to my number zero, sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking out screws. And again, guys, I always remind everybody when you're doing projects like this, make sure you're in a good anti-static environment. Use a wristband or a pad or a mat or something. My bench tops are all anti-static as well as my floors and my entire shop. So I never, ever have a problem with that. <clears throat> Keep track of your screws when you take them out so you get the right screws back in the right holes. It's always good practice. I lay them out on my little magnetic work pad over here. I've opened these up many times, these G5s. They're pretty easy once you get the screws out. The ones in the back on all these Dells, I'll show you. When you take them out, un unthread them, they don't actually come out of the hole. You just have to unthread it until you hear it click a couple of times. Kind of raises up the chassis a little bit, which is totally fine. I'll do this one here so you can see what I'm talking about. They just they just don't come out. You just have to make sure they're unthreaded all the way. All the Dells are like that. The ones in the back. See, so like that click, and that's a good thing. All right. So we got all of our screws out. The ones I did take out, you can see they're all the same length, so no biggie if you get them back in the wrong hole. So now I'm going to take my little plastic spudger tool. If you look in the notes below, I'll have links where you can get this stuff. So what I'm going to do is try to get my tool in here. 
and just gently go around the front. Don't be yanking it off. And don't poke stuff in there. There's stuff in there you don't want to damage, of course. Especially around these ports. So let me get it, like I said, you get it started here. It's not bad. But along the back, you want to be careful where these screws are still in there. Just gently going along here. So, came up pretty good, all right? You can see those screws stay right in the holes, but keep track of them in case one did fall out. Don't want it falling in here. So, we have it opened up. We have our battery. We have a two and a half inch dry bay here. I am going to put a, the customer went with a Crucial MX500 series SATA SSD, two and a half inch drive. It's just a 500 gig. They wanted some extra storage in that bay. And we're going to replace this NVMe drive right here with a 2280. That's just a little short one that we have in there. But before we do anything, guys, I am going to disconnect the battery right here from the motherboard, okay? I'm using plastic tools in here, but we want to disconnect the battery before we start prodding around in here too much. Um, so, let me get a hold of it here. It looks like it just pulls, looks like it just pulls back out of the connector. Actually, that was quite simple. You can see it's clearly marked battery right there. So, okay. So we got the battery disconnected, but I also like to always open the lid back up. Hit the power button a few times. That's weird. Um, got to find, where's my power button? Right here, sorry guys, I was looking for it over here. So let's go ahead and tap the power button a couple times, discharge any residual juice that's in there. That should be good. Just be careful of your screen. All right, so we got the battery disconnected. See we got our cooling fans, our cooling pipes here. Not too bad of a job. There's not a whole lot of cooling up in this area, but I got some pretty good ventilation back here. The first thing I'm going to do is the memory, which is under these little protective sheets here. We pull that up, we're going to get our 32 gigs in. So we're going to try not to destroy that. To get the memory out, all you got to do is take these little metal clips on the side, expand them out slightly, and the RAM should pop right up. Just like that. So we're going to get that out of there. They got two. We got two four gig sticks of 2933 in here, so I'm going to get rid of that. Get these popped up here. There we go. And we're going to go with our 16 gig module here. Carefully put it in, and it only goes one way. It's keyed to go in a certain way, so be careful. No, my hand's in the way, guys. Sorry. Make sure you get it snapped in there all the way. Just be careful when you're inside of a laptop like this, guys. You're not touching stuff you really don't need to touch. If you can help it, even though the battery is disconnected. Oop, got to flip it around the right way. So we get it in. So it looks like we got it in there good. All right, so we're done with the RAM. So now the SSD that I'm going to put in, my Western Digital Black, we're going to have to remove a couple of screws here. And then the, if you look really close on these, there's a little adapter right here that goes in the slot here. I'll show you. I'll get it out. Again, I got a number zero Phillips here with a good magnetic tip on it. Just carefully pull that up along with the screw. Remember, actually, let me put that over here. And there's also another screw in the back here to hold this heat sink on right here, right by the Wi-Fi card. Just be careful in there. So we're going to get that out of the way. Because we're not going to use that. So there's a little copper heat sink with a heat pad on it, which is good. And that's a little 2242 NVMe SSD. So now here's our mounting hole for our 2280 drive that we're going to put in, I believe. Let me see here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to let me get this little guy out of here because we don't need that. I don't want to poke it on the back of the drive there. 
get my hand on it. So that's not needed with the longer, the 2280 here. Again, this is a brand new empty drive. We're going to do a clean install on it. So I'm going to place that in place and it lines up perfectly. Get our mounting screw. Put it back in. Carefully thread it in. All right, so let me look here at the way this all lines up. So the drive is right in an area here where there's really not a lot of ventilation. So in this case, I decided I'm going to go ahead, in addition to the, the label heat shield Western Digital has, has on there, I'm going to put a heat pad on it. I've done it both ways with and without. I've never had a complaint, never had a problem. But in this case, I'm going to do it just so I can show you how to do it. So. You can leave me comments down there if you want, telling me I didn't need to do it. That's okay, I'm doing it anyway. Just want to spread that heat out evenly across the drive here. Get it on the controller and the NAND chips, just like that. There should be plenty of room. Put that on there. Which there is. Let's see what's underneath here. Yeah, they don't give you any ventilation or heat shielding here. Some of them do. They have a heat shield on the back side. So now, I'm going to peel this UV stuff up in here. I get a hold of it. All right. So, I'm happy with that. So we got our SSD, our one terabyte black SN750. We got our HyperX RAM in. Now the last thing is I'm gonna take this two and a half inch drive bay out of here. Looks like we have a mounting screw right here, one over here and one here. And our cable is inside there. I can see it right there. <clears throat> Let me get this out. And you can put any two and a half inch drive over here, guys. It can be a regular HDD, a mechanical hard drive, one terabyte, two terabyte. And you can, if you look right here, Dell was kind enough to give you the mounting screws. There's four screws right here that you use to mount the drive in the caddy here. Um, I got millions and millions of screws here, but I'll go ahead and use the ones supplied by Dell. So let's get that out. And our cable is right underneath here. We've got to thread it out of the handy dandy way they taped it in there. Not damaging it too bad. Just like that. Don't need that tape. Stick it out of my leg. Alright, so here's our two and a half inch drive. <clears throat> it's going this cable is going to attach right here to the motherboard. See right here it's marked HDDD. We've got to flip this little black lever up here carefully. Not too hard to break that off, and yeah, you'll have a bad day. So let's get the drive. Let me get my screws out of here that they so kindly gave us. Sorry guys, don't yell at me. I need to move along here, so I'm just gonna cheat a little bit here. Oop, wrong way, Dale. Yeah. They're in there pretty good, so I'm just going to get them out this way quicker. Could get out my big giant impact cord this wrench, but I don't think I need to do that, do I? No. <laughs> All people leave comments, hey, you can't use a cordless drill. It's not a drill, it's a screwdriver. Good magnetic tip. Use it a lot around the shop. Very handy when you're in a hurry. All right, so we're going to mount this in there. Put the cable on the drive. It only goes one way, obviously. Just like that. Looks like they got it kind of pre-bent for us, I believe. Make sure. Actually. How am I going to do that? Got to have this side up. Uh, I'm going to go with it like that. What do you think? Yep. Look good? 
They're all a little different. All right. All right, guys, figured it out. Sorry about that. Um, I actually had the drive in the caddy the wrong way. I flipped it around so the label side of the drive is going to face down. That's why my holes didn't line up just right. I was just getting in a hurry. Sorry about that. So this cable is going to go underneath the drive. Have it connected here. It's going to bend around like that. It's going to go in basically like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this to the motherboard first because once you get this in there, there's literally no wiggle room in there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this in there. I'm sorry my big fat head gets in the way. Uh, where'd my little tool go? These tools are kind of handy. Probably can't really see what I'm doing there. Just want to get that connected. Ah. So, so you got it connected in there. Make sure it's all the way up to that little black line, which it is. Now we're going to flip this back over. And we're going to put this in place. And that cable should bend just the way it's supposed to. Ah, this just doesn't line up very good in here, guys. All right, it's in place. It is connected to the motherboard, and it's just micrometers away from our SSD there along the edge should be okay. Yeah, it's kind of underneath of it, so I think we're going to be okay. All right, so let me put my own screws back in. That cable wants to kind of push it up a little bit, but it was pre-bent like that from the factory. And if you look close on the caddy, while it fails, you can look at the little instruction images they have here might be a little helpful. Yeah, I just didn't want that cable sticking up. Engineers, you gotta love them. Get this since mounted in here and we'll do our clean install and we'll be good to go. Now like after any clean install of Windows 10, you want to make sure you get all the appropriate drivers. I will go to Dell's website, punch in the service tag number get me off to the place for any additional software I need to download or apps or things like that. Keepers. All right. There, so we got our 500 gig SATA SSD, our one terabyte Western Digital Black, two new sticks of RAM. We're good to go as soon as I connect the battery back up here. And once you connect the battery, just be careful. Don't touch anything if you can help it. But that only goes in there one way, guys, so you don't need to force it just like that. Get my little tool here. Spudge it along. That looks good. All right, so we're done with that. I'm going to put my cover back on. Look good? All right. I'm going to snap along the front here. Now, I always like to wait to put all the screws back in. It's just a little habit I've gotten into over the years. Now, remember, your screws are still in here, so you don't want to be squeezing and forcing that. I am going to, and I'm going to use my number zero. Get these back down. So it ain't sticking up. Alright, check all your seams. It looks good. And torque these back down just so they're not sticking out. And always use good quality tools. Guys, don't use old boogered up screwdrivers are working with this new stuff because these are easy to strip out and mess up if you're not careful. Good tools, anti-static prevention or static, anti-static gear, so to speak. So let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna plug in my AC adapter. 
All right, and here's my USB Windows 10 installation drive. You can make one of these by downloading the Windows Media Creation Tool. I have a link down below where you, I got a video on how easy it is to make one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and these new Dells have that flip to boot. So when you open the lid, it wants to come on. And all right, first thing it's telling me is the amount of system memory has changed, which is fine. So I'm going to hit continue. Because it did change. And see if it'll default to our flash drive. There it goes. So I'm going to walk you through real quick the, the setup on this Windows 10. It goes pretty quick. In my case, I'm choosing English, United States, hit next. Just simply click on install now. We want to make sure we install our Windows on our one terabyte SSD, not our 500. I mean, technically, you could do it either way. You could also partition the one terabyte NVMe SSD. Some people like to have their Windows installed on a small partition, keep it separate from everything else. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. It's easy to do later with a simple partition utility, like AOMI or something like that. But I chose my one terabyte. And we're going to get the, this part going here, and I'll come back in just a few minutes here, guys, and I'll walk you through the quick setup. I'll be right back. All right, guys, got all the files copied over. I didn't want to bore you with all that. It went really, really quick, just a couple of minutes. But once you get to the, the region part here, you can pull out your flash drive. So in my case, I'm just going to select United States. U.S. keyboard layout. No, I'm going to skip additional layouts. Everything I'm doing in here, you can do later in the settings. I always choose right here, I don't have internet, unless you want to set up your Microsoft account or, or a Microsoft account. Again, you can do that later, but if you choose this, it goes a little quicker. Don't need internet to get into Windows, so I'm going to hit I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. And you put in the customer's name or your name or whatever you want there. But by doing this way without Say, you know, saying I don't have internet, Microsoft isn't going to force you to set up a Microsoft account before you can continue on. To me, that's just kind of annoying. I always like to turn off all this stuff just for privacy sakes. I leave location on, hit accept. And not now, this Cortana, we don't care about that. But again, you can go in and customize all this a little later in the settings. So we're going to get it into Windows here. Um, we'll have the 20H2 edition install, I'll get all the updates. And of course, I'm going to go to Dell's website and get any additional apps or tools they have because it's a gaming laptop. And I usually like to get the newest graphics drivers right from the manufacturer. Windows, eh, sometimes not the best drivers, especially when you got GTX or RTX graphics. You can always go right to NVIDIA's website and get the newest drivers. But it's not a bad little laptop now. We got 32 gigs of RAM instead of 8 and a new 1 terabyte NVMe SSD plus extra 500 SATA SSD. <clears throat> 10th generation Core i5, not too bad. I'm just killing time here guys until we get into Windows. Check out some more of my videos. I got lots of videos on doing upgrades similar to this. And how to make the boot uh, flash drive for Windows. So there. So now that we're in Windows, got to do a couple little maintenance things here. Oops. Don't need that. First thing, I'm going to open up Task Manager. Just type in Task in your search box. Hit Enter. Go to More Options. Click on Performance. Of course, there's our CPU, Memory. We got 32 gigs of 2933 megahertz memory. That's good. But now with that new SATA, you know, let me go in here to. There's our one terabyte Western Digital black drive right there with Windows on it. Again, you could easily partition that. I'm just choosing not to do that. I asked the customer, they said, no, leave it like that. So I'm going to right click on the start button. We're going to go to disk management. This is the quickest way to do it. And here it's telling us that we got a new drive that we have to initialize. I'm going to hit OK. 
I went with the GPT partition table. Let me open that up. So it's right here, unallocated. I'm going to simply right click on it. New simple volume. Simply you're going to accept all the defaults through here. See here you can change partition size, but I'm just going to accept the defaults. Next, drive letter D. <coughs> NTFS. You can name the drive something there if you want. You can do that later too. But hit finish. Do a quick format, and it should pop right up here in a second. There. So there's our new volume. We're good to go. So we got both our drives set up and initialized. Plenty of memory. Going to get some drivers, updates, and got a nice clean little upgrade here. So thanks for watching, guys. Check out more of my videos. Don't forget to give me a like if you like it. If you loved it, give me a sub. That would be great. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.